for he's not going to need those for some time based on the forecast. Yeah. Uh, Ned relayed the funniest line of the spring that you had. Um, that I, even Columbus needed three ships. So just talking about catching depth. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> he did. Uh, <laughs> I can see his mind work. Oh, he did, <laughs> huh? <laughs> uh, just talk a little bit about what Martin brings to this team and how important the value of, of, of yeah, an experience. Yeah, that's a great there. question. And you know, first of all, you know, <clears throat> anytime you lose a, a player like Salvador Perez, it's uh, you know, it, it's hard to overcome. And um, but I'm, I'm really excited, uh, and we're excited the way Cam Gallagher and, and uh, Melbourne Valori have stepped up. I mean, they have given us a lot of confidence uh, going forward, uh, and a lot of hope. Uh, they give us a lot of depth. Uh, we think both of them have a chance to be frontline major league catchers. But at the end of the day, we, we felt we really needed you know um, more depth than to have a a guy um, like Martin Maldonado, um, who's one of the elite. Uh, catch and throw guys in this league. Um, we think that his power still has some potential as well. I mean, last year at this power numbers, the second half increased. Uh, we like that. The year before, um, you know, his power numbers, uh, you know, had, had been okay. And uh, so, uh, but we really like the fact that he can shut down a running game, um, you know, give our pitchers a lot of confidence as well. And so uh, there's just a lot of things that we really, felt were important um, in, in making this addition. One of the benefits, too, is now Valoria can go play every day and, and continue his development as opposed to maybe. Well, I think as we begin, but, you know, there's no there's no guarantee. I mean, he goes down there and, and uh, to the minor leagues and swings the bat and continues to catch and throw the way he's been throwing. I mean, he'll, he'll force our hand. And so, uh, you know, one of the things in – uh, losing Salvador for the year is, as we know, that that impactful bat in the middle of our lineup. I mean, he's he's two straight, you know, Silver Slugger awards. Uh, somebody who can, you know, just you know, hit with power and is a presence in our lineup. And so, um, you know, we, we're going to be constantly looking to to improve our offense as well. And so, Valoria, as we know, is uh, as an offensive oriented catcher. And you know, there's no reason he can't force our hand as we go forward. So. Um, you know, we began this season with uh, with a mindset that Cam would be the backup to Salvi. Mm -hmm. uh, that has uh, that has not changed. I mean, he's going to be on this team, and as as we sit here today, there's there's still a couple weeks left of spring training. Uh, we need to maintain health. Um, you know, all those good things. But uh, we feel like we have a really good uh, group. Uh, you know, with uh, with our catching depth now. What was the importance, um, so many young pitchers in Rule 5 guys, to have kind of an experienced, a, a more experienced guy behind the plate for those guys in particular? Well, that that, that pitcher-catcher relationship is, is crucial for any successful team. And so to have a guy like, you know, Martin back there uh, with his experience, as I said, his ability to receive and frame and, and block and throw just brings a lot of uh, confidence uh, to our pitching staff. And as you mentioned, a young pitching staff who – certainly is, is going to, to need that in over 162 games. But look, we, we like Cam a lot as well. We, we think Cam has a chance to be an elite receiver as well. Uh, you know, he's, his bat continues to develop. You know, we think he has a chance to be a, an everyday major league catcher. And uh, with Melbris, I mean, he's, he's the same. I mean, he's a guy that a lot of upside. Obviously, last year he got a, got a chance to come to the major leagues because of some injury, but, uh, you know, has not played a game above high A. And so you, you want to make sure that he gets uh, the proper nurturing and development uh, in the minor leagues. How, um, how, I guess, quickly did Martin become an option for you guys? And I think people start connecting the dots as soon as Sal's news came out. And, um, yeah, it's a natural natural place to look, of course. I mean, one of, again, one of the elite uh, catchers uh, in, in our game remained in the, in the free agent market. So. Uh, you know, when we got news uh, earlier that day that, you know, Salvi was probably going to have to go in for an MRI and through Nick's uh, judgment, uh, anticipating the worst, expecting the best, uh, we began to, you know, make a lot of calls and, uh, and see what, uh, you know, his situation was. But, Lynn, even before that, I mean, we were looking to add depth uh, with a catching position in AAA, even when expecting Salvi to be healthy for, for 2019. I mean, we were looking for that depth. So we were kind of already in the, I mean, we, we felt uh, there was perhaps maybe 14 catchers that were gonna be available uh, at the end of spring training 
that could potentially go to AAA and give us that depth. And then obviously when Salvi went down, that search, that evaluation intensified and that brought us to Martine and uh, we began to have discussions uh, you know, uh, early on in that process. And then obviously when it was confirmed that Salvi was gonna have Tommy John, those talks uh, you know, sped up and we were able to get a deal done rather did, quickly. Did his, did his change in representation have any impact on your ability to get a deal done? It could have. It could have, but it, but it, at the end of the day, look, we we always try to be extremely fair to the player, and uh, you know we'd been negotiating his deal and um, with his previous representation, and uh, you know we had we had reached our our breaking point. I mean, we were at the end of the rope with what we could do, and so the deal did not change because it simply could not change, and uh, so when he changed uh, representation, that uh, it was just just a formality as far as communicating you know, what we could do. And whether we're, there was other options or other teams stepped up, uh, I'm not sure about that. But uh, obviously, you know, this was an opportunity that he felt was important. And uh, we're, we're fortunate to have him at this point in time in camp. Dave, you oftentimes will say, hey, we've been following so-and-so players since, since high school or since college, or remember like when Goodwin came in here, we've been, we've been on him for a while. Right. But in a, I would think like in a case, I know you know who all the players are, but in a case like a Maldonado or a catcher, you, you've had that star catcher. You haven't needed right. that number one. So where's the history with him, or how long have you kind of paid attention to that? Well, only, only in the fact, you know, when we rank out catching every single year uh, with our scouts, uh, with our analytical people as well, I mean, he's always at the, the very top when it comes to our rankings. So we're certainly aware of what he can do and shutting down a running game and his framing ability. I mean, so we're, we're, we're certainly uh, mindful of, of his abilities in those areas. And so, um, you know, again, when, he, when we needed a catcher and he's still available, I mean, we knew right where to go.